shape in this region now and flush out some facts about exactly what states are in this place we're calling the Middle East. When it comes to the Middle East, where is it? Uh, what is it? And who's in it? Uh, first off, the where. Where is it? Even when it comes to the basics of something like where this region is, it's kind of tricky because it's still a matter of opinion and debate for academics and real peeps alike. It is certainly, certainly the Middle East is parts of this big projecting peninsula called the Arabian Peninsula. And certainly it's parts of the southwest quadrant of the continent of Asia. And some would say, and certainly it's part of the northeastern quadrant of the continent of Africa. But after that, depending on who you ask, perhaps it includes the whole northern section of the continent of Africa. Maybe more than that. Maybe it even includes more of Asia. Maybe all the way to Central Asia. So why is this particular region so tricky? Because actually, most of the other ones are not. If we talk about Africa, yeah, we got that. That's a continent. If we talk about North America, we got that. Even if you talk about Western Europe, okay, I got that. But when it comes to the Middle East, we're like, uh, oh, what? Maybe it's because it's sometimes hard to define the middle of something. What is it exactly in the middle of? First off, why is it the Middle East? What's so middle about it? Well, what the middle is, actually, we're not exactly sure because it's first coined, this term Middle East, by most historical accounts, was first coined in 1902, that's just over a century ago, by a United States naval officer <laughs> doing some intelligence reconnaissance work, uh, or maybe some diplomatic work, I guess. Uh, and it originally, in his definition, referred to everything in the Asian region uh, south of the Black Sea, between the Mediterranean Sea, all the way to India. Everything, everything kind of Mediterranean Black Sea area, all the way east to India, which is a pretty big swath. Now, he picked out this term and started using the term Middle East, which stuck, uh, to replace another term, which was in more frequent use up to that point in time, called the Near East. You don't hear about that one too much anymore. And maybe it was because the Near East was more of a loaded term. The Near East, what does that mean? It means that a lot of folks on the planet in the last 500 years said, well, you know, we're here, and so there's this stuff that's east of us, but it's near. It's not far east of us, it's, it's east, but near east of us. Okay, let's stop the boat there for a second. Who's us? Who made up these terms Near East and Far East initially? Ah, I bet you have the answer already. That would be the Western European colonial slash imperial powers that went out and took over most of the world uh, for most of the last 500 years. And so them being the center of the universe, according to them, would then put these geographic titles on things in reference to them. So you're in Western Europe and what's east of you? Oh, that's near, it's, it's east, it's near east. Not far, it's near. So at different times in history, the Near East is actually referred to even parts of what we call Eastern Europe now. But certainly back in the day, that whole Ottoman Empire, that whole area, it's near Europe, it's east of Europe, and it's near Europe. It ain't us, it's the Near East. Got it? And you might have heard this other term, the Far East. Ah, the exotic Far East which back in the day referred to things that were east of Europe and very far away, <laughs> namely uh, China, Japan, even Southeast Asia back in the day. That was the Far East. The Middle East was the Near East. And actually, that doesn't even make any sense. Shouldn't India have then become the Middle East? I don't know. It makes geographic sense to me, but all those wacky uh, Europeans in their imperial era. However you want to cut it up and dice it up, no one really uses Near East anymore, and Far East, you still hear, I guess, uh, in uh, descriptions sometimes, but the Middle East is the one that's stuck. So what we have in this bizarre twist of historical fate is a American term that was spun off of a European historical imperial term that is applied to this region. Already we see that this region 
has somewhat or maybe always been defined by outsiders. Even its name is being defined by people outside of the region. I will tell you this, though. No one in the Middle East thought of themselves as in the middle a thousand years ago, and maybe not even a hundred years ago. But this is a term that now has such broad application and has been adopted everywhere that I've asked people from the Middle East and I say, do you think you're in the middle of something? Are you in the Middle East? And people say, yeah, everybody uses the term now. So not a hundred years ago, but sure, it's it stuck. We're in the Middle East. So we all agree on this term, Middle East, even the people within the region now. Okay, who would that be? Who's in the Middle East? Remember, for purposes of this class, or even if you just want to be a smart and informed global citizen, we want to define these regions based on some sort of homogeneous trait, right? That sameness trait, which is consistent uh, throughout all of the states or the area that you're talking about. And that, that trait would be different once you get outside of your defined region. And this Middle East region uh, is going to be based on a whole slew of homogeneous traits and similarities that we will soon discuss. Uh, some would include all of the states in this neighborhood as part of the Middle East that have at least some sort of shared intertwined history. Uh, some people would define the Middle East region as those states that have a shared physical climate and landscape or maybe even a shared type of resource base. Uh, others may define the region based on a shared cultural characteristic like ethnicity, or better yet, and the most frequently used one is, many define the region based on a shared cultural characteristic like religion, ah, in this case, of course, being Islam. Uh, that's the one that most people would use, be like, oh, everybody that's Islamic around here, that's the Middle East. Ah. I got some problems with that one because there's a billion and a half Islamic people all over the world. We ain't calling people in Indonesia part of the Middle East, although it's 100% or not 100%, it's mostly Islamic. So I, we're going to use a combination of these homogeneous traits to kind of tack down what is this region, what's it all about. But dig this, no matter who you ask, really anywhere in the world, academic or average person, we all can pretty much agree about the states that are in the core of this area. So the region is nebulous, all regions are, because they're defined by you, the user, but we all recognize political states. So we're gonna pick off what states that we think are in this entity called the Middle East. And it's up for debate, as I started this little talk on, but almost all of us, really everybody would say, well, no, we can pick a handful of states, a couple handfuls of states that everybody says yes. Those are definitely in the Middle East because it's the core of the area itself. And the core refers collectively to the Southwest Asian countries of the Arabian Peninsula. This is a, that's a physical geography term, a peninsula. Everyone says, yes, the Arabian Peninsula, that is actually the center of the Middle East. And let's call them out by name. Namely, Saudi Arabia is right at the center, the biggest country and kind of the powerhouse of the Arabian Peninsula, certainly in the Middle East. And all the countries that border it are also in the core of this Middle East. Uh, Yemen, Oman, United Arab Emirates, AKA the UAE, uh, Qatar, Bahrain, Kuwait, Jordan, Iraq, Syria, Lebanon, Israel, Palestine, and we'll even throw in Cyprus. And that peninsular core of all those countries that we all say, yes, that's Middle East, is typically capped by Turkey. Almost everybody puts Turkey into this core of the Middle East as well. Personally, I question Turkey's inclusion in this regional definition, but more on that later. This peninsular core topped by Turkey is almost always inclusive of the bookended states on either side as well, namely Iran, always included in the Middle East, and Egypt, always included in the Middle East. But wait a minute, Egypt, isn't that in Africa? That's not part of the Arabian Peninsula, I know. This is where our definition starts to expand a bit. Yes, Egypt is an African country. We often forget that because we so often and naturally include it in the Middle East. Uh, we also, because of that, probably need to include some other African countries, 
because they're so near to this core. If you're definitely and always going to include Egypt in the Middle East, shouldn't you also include the very similar uh, culturally and ethnically and religiously and geographically close countries of Sudan, Eritrea, Djibouti, and Somalia? I mean, look at the map. They're just across the narrow little ribbon called the Red Sea uh, from the Arabian Peninsula. And they share all of the same similarities and homogeneous traits that the Arabian Peninsula countries do. So I include those in the Middle East as well. Hang on, now we're not done. If you're looking at these same homogeneous features of this Middle Eastern region, like religion and ethnicity and history and climate, then you have to keep expanding the group of countries across North Africa that fall nicely into this regional definition as well. So almost everybody also includes Libya, Tunisia, Algeria, Morocco, this nebulous territory called Western Sahara, and even Mauritania. And honestly, heck, it's really everything north of this band called the Sahel, which kind of separates North Africa from Sub-Sahara Africa. Really, every country that's within uh, the Saharan deserts, or at least partially within the Saharan deserts, really shares all these same traits and probably should be included in the Middle Eastern region as well. So I will also include parts of uh, Northern Mali, uh, Niger, I even say parts of the fringe parts of Northern Nigeria, uh, Northern Chad. And when we get back to, now we've come full circle, we're back to Sudan. And isn't it uh, uh, a mysterious intrigue that Sudan just recently split into Sudan and South Sudan? No, it's not. And it actually helps reinforce this whole concept of the Middle East region. This single country of Sudan split because South Sudan is not like the Middle East. It's way more like countries of Sub-Saharan Africa. The northern part, which is now called Sudan, uh, is very much like all of the countries of, uh, of the Middle East. And you, so you had this singular country that a few years ago split into two because of its massive differences. And that encapsulates and crystallizes, yes, the northern part of Sudan, definitely part of the Middle East, as is all of those parts of North Africa that I've now named out. So that, for our course, for purposes of our course, and this is my regional definition, Feel free to argue with it, but for this course, here is, again, a summary of the countries that I'm going to include in the Middle East. All of the countries of the Arabian Peninsula, again, capped by Turkey, although I'm putting a question mark on Turkey, certainly Egypt and Iran on the bookends, and all of North Africa, the north of this band called the Sahel, any country that has parts of it or it's fully in the Sahara Desert. So North Africa... Uh, from Morocco and Mauritania all the way over to parts of Ethiopia and Somalia, the entire Arabian Peninsula, all the way up to Iran, and topped by Turkey. Okay, that's me. That's the region for our course. But be aware that some peeps go even further than that, uh, and even bigger than that, with a broader definition of the term Middle East. Uh, you will see in some places, some textbooks I assume, that uh, uh, some regional definitions include Afghanistan, maybe Pakistan, again, based on things like Islam, I guess, and a few other things, maybe. Uh, some go as far as to including all of Central Asia. Again, because it's Islamic, I, I, it's up to the user, obviously, but to me, you just start including everybody that's Islamic and you're going all the way to Indonesia, and that's certainly not a regional, good regional definition of the Middle East. Going to Central Asia, to me, is a camel ride too far. It starts to stretch your homogeneous pattern too thin, uh, and, and it, it dissipates the meaning of the term Middle East itself. So I don't go any further east than Iran. Uh, oh, oh, and speaking of homogeneous traits, so yeah, we, we got to do a whole bunch of that now, and maybe by doing this, you'll see why I include the countries I do, and maybe why I don't include Turkey, and why I certainly don't include Central Asia. So if we're going to include that huge swath of countries that's crossing two continents, what are the similarities that the world regional class is going to use to define them as a singular regional unit? Well, I've already started to give you some of them. Uh, you may have heard me pepper some homogeneous uh, hints uh, here in the last few minutes about what connects up all of these sovereign states into a single entity. But now let's explore these traits in more thorough detail. 
What are some of the commonalities between all these countries we've chatted about? Well, there are some huge ones. And there are some equally huge exceptions to those traits that we will point out along the way. I asked this uh, question when we started the lecture. What do you think of when you think of the term Middle East? What springs to mind? Here is what most students have typically shouted out. Answers I've collected and aggregated over a couple of decades of teaching this class. When I say, what do you think of when you think of the Middle East? Uh, here's what most American students say. Uh, it's a desert. It's a desert. Middle East, desert. Middle East, they got oil. They got all that oil. Middle East, it's all Muslim. They're all Islamic. Middle East, it's all Arab. They're Arab peoples. Middle East, oh, it's filled with conflict, riddled with conflict, a hot zone of conflict on planet Earth. Yeah. Uh, are those all 100% correct? No, nope. there are some major exceptions to those rules, but those are actually all great traits to start with. Homogeneous traits to bind most of the states of this area together into a singular regional unit. Now let's explore each of them in depth, as well as, of course, pointing out the massive exceptions to each rule as well. So let's mount up on your camels and let's press forward into the shifting sands of the Middle East desert.